Good afternoon to everybody and welcome to Linea Pelle, um, Linea Pelle Fair webinar. And this afternoon we have a workshop and I will introduce you our guest. This afternoon we have Jacqueline Brennan from New York City and uh, his guest coming and now she will present uh, the webinar. Hi everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day. We are so excited to be here today with the Linea Pele community. Thank you so much for having us. As Matteo said, my name is Jacqueline Brennan. I'm based in New York City. And my true purpose is to help brands and entrepreneurs find their unique magic by connecting the dots using creative duality. The ability to explore new frontiers and innovations by making the connection between business and branding. And I have a very special guest that's here with us today, one of my personal friends, Mr. Vikash Shah. Um, Vikash has been helping companies grow by merging the science of data and the art of conversation. So he started his career at Vayner Media and built a growth team from one to over 10. He's worked with Fortune 100 companies optimizing their 100K budgets. And during his time at Vayner Media, he's worked with some big companies like Dove, NFL, Pepsi, GE, and Hasbro, to name a few. He's currently running his own marketing agency focused on growth and helps his clients through a combination of data and insights to deliver meaningful growth. So welcome, Vikash. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mateo, uh, for hosting this. And thank you to everybody who works at Lini Um Jax, I'm looking forward to the presentation and just starting uh, to add value to everybody that's joined today. So thank you again. Absolutely. And we're just going to go ahead and get started here. So we're, again, we're here today to be talking about translating branding and sales into marketing and financial data. What does that mean? What tools are we going to touch base on? And more importantly, what are you going to take away and learn with us today? So I want to start out by this quote, of course, by the amazing Jeff Bezos. Everybody knows who he is, the founder of Amazon. And basically, this is talking about the importance of great experience and word of mouth. This is your most powerful marketing tool. If you create and build a beautiful experience, people are going to talk about it. So at this point of where we are right now with globalization and being going through this global pandemic, I really feel like we're having a great realization. So there's a lot of changes in, in consumer spending habits. It's, it's catapultized by the industry and there's so many different things happening right now. So our goal here today is to explore simple and effective tools to translate that information, take that data and make sales. So that's why we are here today. So we're gonna talk about three main topics today. The online marketing journey across all platforms. So that's social media, email marketing, your website, all channels. We're gonna talk about simple innovation, uh, innovations and platforms to use for e-com. So these are like things that are our secret sauce, our favorite finds that we're gonna share with you that are gonna help you grow and help your business thrive. And the last thing we're gonna talk about today are OKRs, objective key results. First of all, what are they? I don't know how many of you have heard of OKRs before and how do you use them and implement them? So this is some really important information that you need to know and this is going to help optimize your business and grow. So before we dive into the workshop, I just wanna to touch base on a few facts here. So why is this important? We're talking about digital e-com right now. In 2018, worldwide, we were at 481 billion. By 2022, we're gonna be at 713 billion. So this is a booming industry, econ. The numbers are here, the, the data is in. This is what we need to be focusing on, especially right now as things have changed, retail experiences have shifted. So these are some really key statistics for you to think about here. Um, it's very important that we're focusing on, on e-commerce. Fashion consumers are gonna have more buying power than ever. Um, a lot of these sales are gonna be coming through mobile, expanding global markets outside of the West. So like these are the ways that you're gonna take this growth and note these opportunities. We're now looking at a global market. 
right? We're increasing online access through smartphone penetration. People are using their phone to shop online. So how are you optimizing your website, your retail platform, your digital platform for mobile friendly usage? This is so key right now. Um, we are emerging worldwide middle class with new disposable incomes. So there's a whole new generation that is out there who's willing to spend money and shop online and we're going to teach you how to target and market to them and innovating innovative technologies to create experiential e-commerce. So this is what we've been talking about here at Linea Pele. What are the new innovations and trends that are coming to the market? So augmented reality, virtual reality, how we're creating these very cool 360 digital experiences. I know a lot of you tuned in to my conversation with Big Thinks, and they are doing amazing work with virtual runway shows, virtual experiences, turning showrooms completely virtual. So there are tools out there that you can use. So we're really excited today to kind of dive right in and to have Vikash lead us in this e-journey. So a few things to note. We have a chat box here. We encourage you to drop your questions in this chat box. Like communicate with us if you want to emphasize on a point, if you want to ask a question, please, we would love to hear from you. And number two, this is a good point. Grab your notebook and your pen right now because we're really going to dive into this and we want you to have very clear takeaways. So I'm going to welcome Vikash, my friend and our guest here today, who's going to guide us. Thank you, Jacqueline, and I am excited because if we start thinking about the amount of money that's going into e-commerce like Jacqueline showed before, I think we all know in the state of the world that we're living in, this is only going to accelerate that type of adoption. Um, everything that we thought was happening or that was going to take three to five years to get adoption, let it be live streaming, purchasing on the internet, different age groups. That's all happening now. And it's happening quicker and faster. And so that means as businesses, we need to drive that adoption or maybe we will kind of get lost in the dust. And so one of the biggest concepts of that is to understand with digital, there is a transformation in terms of how people purchase products. And now all of us, inherently know this because many of us have purchased products online, but there is a method to the madness. And only until 10 or 15 years ago did we really get an introduction to what this new world may look like and did the science start catching up with the insights of how it's changed. So looking at the next slide, we actually pay attention to this concept of the old marketing journey and the new marketing journey. The old marketing journey is this concept of just awareness, interest, desire, and action. And what that simply means is, hey, we've got to buy TV ads, we've got to get magazine ads, and we have to get X amount of impressions. We have to get 10 impressions per month. Gross rating points, GRPs, these are the ways that we measured the value of our market. We didn't know if it was working. We didn't know how effective it was. It was focused on radio, magazines, TV, and maybe a few other channels. You needed a lot of money to get in. You had to have a product. You had to put all, millions and even hundreds of thousands of dollars to just get entrance into the market. And if people only saw your brand a few times, they may not remember it. Or maybe you had to get shelf space. And that was the only way when people were going inside the store that you could get that awareness. And if we look on further and where that's kind of changed is that now there's a different concept happening, happening now is that similar to what we had before, we still have that awareness, we still have the purchase, but there's two aspects that have dramatically changed. That's the consideration and the post-purchase experience. And before we move on, I'll kind of talk through an example over here. And awareness is simply the main ways. Now we don't just have the shelf space that's in the store the magazines, the TV ads. We don't just have those. We have YouTube, we have Google, we have Facebook, Instagram, SEO, email. There are dozens of ways, podcasts, influencers, many ways that we can reach consumers. And here's the best part. You don't need even $100,000 to push your video ad to a few people. You can now target not just a broad audience of people who uh, watch one TV show or who get this magazine. You can choose 
to target people who speak a certain language, who are interested in yoga, that it may have been purchased a similar product in the past. And so the targeting ability for us to build awareness to your exact target market is clear now. We can really reach whoever we want to. And it's kind of scary, but for us as marketers and business people, it becomes an effective tool for us in the future. And Bikash, so, let me ask you yeah. a quick question. When we're talking yeah. about targeting and that very specific data that we can kind of carve out to get the communities and the people that we want, what kind of tools are you utilizing for this targeting? Are we talking like Facebook, Instagram here? Are we talking Google? Yeah, great question. And a lot of people want to know who is already coming to my website. How can I test who resonates with my audience? And what I always tell them is there's two ways that you can find out who's already coming to your website and more importantly, who your next audience could be. So if you want to find out a little bit more of who your current audience is, I call that organic. And what we, two things that we can do in organic is we can search, we can sign up for a tool by Google. It's called Google search console, or we can even use Google analytics. Those two tools tell us, where are those people who are coming to our website? Where do they live? What are some of their other interests? When they're searching on Google, what are the key terms that they're using to find your website? So from an organic standpoint, organic means that people are coming to your website and they don't have to pay for it. Is that information free? Like this information that you're talking about right now? It is completely free. It is free, everybody. It is free to create a Google <laughs> Analytics account. Like, that's mind-blowing. And one of the things I always tell my clients is, stop whatever you're doing. If you do not have Google Analytics or Google Search Console on your website, immediately, and I say immediately, hang up on the phone with me right now and get it on there. Because <laughs> every day you, yeah, every day that you don't have Google Analytics on your website, you're losing information. And here's why I say that. It, 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 uh, when you install a Google Analytics or Google Search Console onto your website, it can only tell you after you've installed it who is coming to your website. It can't look back three months ago or six months ago. It only starts collecting data after you install it. And we talked about organic ways to kind of find out who's coming to your website. Then there's the paid aspect. And paid simply means I am willing to you know, pay $50, $100, or even $1,000 a week and I would love to figure out with Google and Facebook's help who the right audience is. And, you know, we can talk a little bit more about that, but just think in ahead, thinking ahead, when it comes to paid activities, I can say, I want to target this specific niche and audience who lives here, who's interested over here. And I can test my ad, my video, my audio with that specific audience for a low amount of money for less than even $10. And you can already start getting feedback. So there's the free way, Google Analytics and Google Search Console, and then there's the paid way. And the great part about both is that you can scale them up over time. And we can talk a little bit more about that if people have questions. And when we look at this uh, modern buyer's journey, we talked about awareness, there's different ways to reach people and to understand who's coming to your website. Here is the difference between the modern version and the previous version. There's something called consideration. Now people have these machines in their, uh, in their pockets, they have their phones, they can go online, they can ask friends through text messaging, hey, is this the right eyeliner? What do you think about this company? Do you think that they actually have really good quality clothes? What are the reviews online? Let me check out what Yelp says. And there are many ways for these people to get these types of inserts, uh, to get these types of insights of, hey, what does the public think about it? What's Amazon say about it? And these people are constantly in this research and discovery phase. They're going on Google and they're saying, hey, uh, you know, what do the influencers say about this? What do the reviewers say about this? What can I learn more about this subject that maybe I don't know about right now? And many times they're in this research and discovery loop. And that's all in that consideration phase. And then the phase that we're all trying to get to is that purchase phase. But Let's not, it, let's not dismiss. You've built up awareness. People are coming to your website. You're maybe starting some paid advertising. People are not going to immediately buy with you. You need to create that relationship and trust with them. And what that means is 
you need to focus on that consideration of the research and discovery loop. And I'll talk a little bit more about specifically what you can do, but just in your head, think about it as reviews, research, asking word of mouth friends, back to what Jacqueline mentioned by quoting Jeff Bezos is that you want that great customer experience. And then people purchase, and then there's something else that, wow, we can have that post-purchase experience. And this is something that can reap multiples of return on investment if we just do a good job over here. And what it really is is that loyalty loop. If, so, if I buy some clothing from a suit place and I love the experience, I love the fact that they gave me information and I purchase something from them, I may buy my next suit from them. Or better yet, what these people are gonna do is they're gonna send me emails to tell me how to care for my suit. How, what's the next suit I should purchase because based on the color of the suit I purchased, hey, do you have a black suit? Do you have, a, you know, here's the newest styles you should consider. And what they're doing is they're consistently creating an experience where I can ask. I'm not just getting emails to be like, buy, buy, buy. What they're doing is they're saying, here's a value add. Here's some education. Here's some interesting pieces that, here's how to match your suit and tie together based on what you purchased. And that relationship, because now I can have a direct relationship with a customer online because I have their email address and there's different ways to connect with them, I can continuously reach out to those people. So it isn't just about saying buy, buy, buy after somebody's purchased. It's more about creating that relationship. And what this modern buyer's journey is, what it really thinks about now is how do you treat people in your life? You meet people, you kind of, you know, as adults, we all have to kind of you know, we're all reserved a little bit. We all kind of say, hey, let me hang out with these people a few times. You kind of get a sense of who they are. Then you become friends. And then you continue that trust. And then you kind of develop that loyalty. And so what's happening here is that just like any relationship, that's what's happening online. Even though it's digital, the same rules apply. I love that you said that. It's about creating that memorable experience. That's the thing that are gonna keep people coming back. That's how you gain your customer retention, even when it's digital. So it's so important to have those pieces of information. So I'm glad that you said that, Dave. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, and I'm happy you say that because it's really two areas that you can win dramatically. It's the consideration and the post-purchase experience when it comes to marketing, at least. Because if you create a great experience, that's where Jeff Bezos talks, talks about that customer experience, people will buy from you. And more importantly, they will continue to buy from you. Now, you know, the next slide has a lot of text inside there. I'm not gonna read everything that's going on in this example. All you really need to know is that this is a simple example that explains the buyer's modern journey. And you can read this a little bit after, feel free to take a screenshot. But all it really does is give you a everyday example of how we go through that awareness, consideration, purchase, and post-purchase. And so I'll quickly talk about it. Karen as the example. It's cold in her house. Her heater's broken. It's winter time. What does she do? She searches on Google. So she's aware that there's a problem. She starts searching on Google. Google starts giving her results. Now she's considering what should I do with that information? She starts reading a blog, asking a few friends. She's in that consideration. She's doing her research. She's looking at for more reviews to figure out where should I go? Who should I talk to? She tries some things by herself. It works for a little bit, but maybe the next time it breaks again. She starts asking more questions to Google. Then she finds a few heater companies that can actually help fix all that stuff for her. She looks at the re reviews. Again, she's still, all of this is still in the consideration research, research, research. That's all that's happening over here. And because there's so much information online, we can continuously do this. And then sooner or later, through her research, asking friends, looking on Yelp, researching by herself, she finds somebody to help her out with her heater. She purchases based on the factors and the research she did. And then after her heater is fixed, she goes to this buyer's experience. She loved the experience that she had. She buys a year long service agreement with them. So now Karen has a long term agreement with this heating company. And they simply say, Great, we're going to treat you well. Six months, the next year passes by. She has some additional problems with her heater. Don't worry, but the service agreement, everything's taken care of. And then she starts talking to her friends and be like, Man, I went to this heating company and they helped me out so much. 
they were quick, and that word of mouth happens. Maybe she reviews uh, it online. Maybe she writes something on social. Maybe she tells other friends, or maybe she purchases another service agreement from them for another year, and you create that post-purchase experience. It's a long ex example over here, but I'll leave it to you. And when we start thinking about the buyer's journey, we've got to think about, okay, this is how the buyer buys, but how does that match to what I do as a marketer? How does that all fit together? How do I make sure that my marketing channels like email, ads, audio, all these things match up to that buyer's journey? How do I do that? And one of the best ways is if you don't get anything away uh, from me talking, and I would highly suggest going to and searching for somebody called Avinash Kaushik. His name is hard to pronounce. I'm Indian. He's Indian. Maybe that's why I can kind of say it. But I would highly suggest you look him up. And he's created, he used to work for, he works for Google, and he has created a simple method. And the simple method is your marketing funnel should match up to the journey. And we'll show how that puts all together. But it's this concept of see, think, do, and care. See, think, do, and care. And don't worry. These two concepts, we're going to match them together. We're going to match them up together. But the C part is, let's look at, you know, the Karen example I used before. The largest addressable qualified audience. This is everybody who has a heater. Everybody who has a heater, if I'm a heating person, I want to reach them. Eh, is that the best audience I want to reach? Maybe. But then there's the people who are thinking. These are the people who are researching online with Google. And Google tells you, hey, Karen and Vikash are looking for a heating service agent. They're looking for articles on how to fix and to diagnose what's wrong with their heater. Those are the people that are thinking. And then there's the people who actually say, hey, I want to make that decision and purchase. Either buy a product that can help me fix up my heater, a tool, or I want to buy, uh, you know, I want to work with somebody that can help me out with that. Those are the people who do. And then there's that care. And we talk about that loyalty. work. So now let's look at that, how we mash it up all together on that next slide. And you see awareness is everybody that you can reach. And then there's the people who are thinking, the people who are actually going into Google, asking their friends, and they're considering and they're doing that research. And then there's the people who purchase, do, and then care. I always have this fun anecdote. Um, and, you know, the, I can tell who you are by the ads you get served. So if I look at your Instagram, true, right? Because it's yeah. like, what are you Googling? What are you looking at? What are you researching? It's so true. And it's scary sometimes when you go on Facebook after you were just online shopping or browsing for things and you're like, wow, they're retargeting me. Here it is. I was thinking of these shoes. Boom. There they yeah, are. And, and I would ask everybody over here, maybe just type in really quickly. Have you ever had that experience? Yes or no. Just yes or no. Have you ha ever had that experience where you're on Instagram, you're on Google, you're anywhere and then you're like, wait, how do they know that I'm interested in that? How do they know that I research for something like that? How many of you have had, you know, experiences like that? I would love to just yeah. simple yes or no, nothing really too complex. Yes. Just say yes. And, you know, continue to think about that. And I'll give you guys 10, 15 seconds to just think about that. And again, you know, the joke is show me your ads and I'll show you who you are. Now, here's why I say that. Google and Facebook are tracking everything. Now, I'm not here to talk about the politics of data privacy. What I am here is to say, we have some tools available to us that we can leverage these insights. And if you think about, man, Google actually knows anything, that's, anything that I research. They know, hey, maybe if I have relationship issues, because maybe I type into Google, hey, how do I fix this relationship up with somebody? Maybe they know my medical conditions because maybe there's something that's happened that you're looking for research. You're buying something. You're constantly going into search engines, i.e. Google, to research. And so what you're looking at right now is this culmination. It's a little messy. It's a little ugly. But just stay with me over here. We see that see, think, and do, and care. We see these four areas. And they match up to that buyer's journey. Now, on the left-hand side, you see these long columns over there. You see all these keywords, display banner ads, PPC, pay-per-click. Those are Google ads. 
SEO. Hey, when somebody's searching for how to fix my heater, is my company showing up over there? You see Facebook ads. And what you try to really do is match up your marketing channels to these areas in the funnel. There's actually an easier way to uh, visualize this. And when we go to the next slide, you'll see it a little differently. The words in the top may be different, reach, acquisition, conversion, loyalty, but there's still awareness, consideration, purchase, and post posters. Don't worry about the names on the top. They're all the same. And then what you have to kind of consider is, hey, for me to build awareness or reach with people, I need shopping ads. I need to show up on Google. I need to do social, word of mouth. And then you start thinking, what are the channels I need to have to reach my users? And Josh, I know there's a question a, here. Yeah. As we're talking about re reach, acquisition, conversion, loyalty, as we're talking about ads, someone wants to know how much money do you need to start testing ads? So we, we have some companies that are tuning in that are you know, very large international brands. We have some companies who are uh, potentially smaller startup brands and businesses, but how much money do you really need to play with to get a good test in for running marketing ads? It's a great question. And, you know, there are many ways to answer that question, but I'll give you some principles to help answer the question. And I'll also give you a dollar amount. There are many ways, dozens, if not hundreds of ways that you can test audiences and creative and call to actions on ads. There's so many different ways, but a rule of thumb I always say is, Hey, make sure, at least 1,000 to 5,000 people see your ad, and you should be able to better understand how they reacted to your ad. And when I say reacted, I don't mean that they purchased. I mean that they either liked, commented, liked, or you know, shared, or it. yeah, or they clicked through. And so between one to 5,000 people, you can generally get an understanding of how effective the ad was. Now, be very clear what I said. I didn't say that they purchased. I just meant that they engaged because every step of the journey, you need to have a different objective. So maybe with the Facebook ad, the objective is I want them to click or I want them to find a product. And I'll tell you with under anywhere from 10 to $25, you can get a clear understanding if maybe an audience or an ad is good for you. And maybe sometimes even cheaper than that, you could do it. Now, for larger companies, they have to say, hey, I don't need to make $10,000 $10, per month. I need $2 million this month. Well, great. We now need to ratchet up the paid advertising to match your goal. And of course, you can spend hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars online, but we have to make sure it makes sense for your objective. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as we move on, so I'm going to quickly go over this next section. This is kind of the boring section, and I'll be honest with you, but if you don't do this section, you will not have success. Well, I why are these important? Like we've, we've heard them before. I've practiced them, you know, within yeah. our startup for goal setting. Why, let's talk about what OKRs are and why they're important. Yeah, I'll talk about this very passionately. If you don't know where you're going, you are gonna get lost. Um, and yes, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to get lost. So you need to set some goals and objectives to be able to measure your success, right? Exactly. And, and what, here's what I found. People say, Vikash, I want to start spending $1,000 online. Every customer who comes in needs to come in for only $10 a piece. And I sat there and I'm like, okay, great. We're going to spend $1,000 a month. We're going to get a new customer for only $10. Let's look at your data. Oh, I've never ran ads before. Oh, okay. Well, how did you come up with those numbers? I don't know. I'm just guessing. I heard somebody else say that. Oh, okay. Well, why don't we start testing out to see what works? Well, I've ran a couple of tests and they didn't work or they did work. But my friend said for $10, I can get customers. Well, cool. But for us to build up that foundation of data and insights, we need to do that for ourselves because maybe our friend has a different product or different experience than what we do. And so OKRs give us a framework for how do we build those insights and that data to get to the results that we want to. 
we, everybody thinks that you can just leapfrog from awareness to purchase, awareness to purchase. Oh, this is going to happen so quickly. Here's the sad part. You need to do a lot more work nowadays because people have more choice and they can make more decisions. So OKRs are simply a framework for goals to get us to continuously iterate and iterate, not just marketing goals, but ultimately the entire company. So I'll quickly talk about an example of it. And I would highly suggest you do this at your company. And again, I'm not gonna spend all the time over this. You will probably get this information or screenshot the information. Objectives and key results are just a way for your company, team, department, or even personally to figure out measurable goals. That's it. That's all they are. They're not too crazy. Here's an example. The objective is understand the factors that influence the company's revenue. That's the objective. You don't see a number inside there. You just see an overall statement. Now, here's where the secret sauce comes in, the key result. The key result has to have a number. And it has to show you that these are the components to make, to hit the objective, to achieve the objective. So I want to figure out the uh, factors that influence the company's revenue. I need to do at least 12 online surveys. And I need to develop a report that has these numbers inside of it. If I do those two key results, I know I'll have achieved my objective. So let's check on, let's go to a couple other slides. An example of an objective. Now this is a little bit more specific. Again, this is actionable. This is the O part of the OKR. You're looking for a 70% achievement rate. So it's like, hey, we got to grow $100,000 this quarter. And you know, you've never done that before. Maybe you know, try to lower it a little bit, but make it hard enough to actually reach. And make sure this objective ties to the overall company goal. And we all do this over and over and over again, but the objective doesn't have a number. It's the key result that has the number that's a component of the objective. So when we look at the example of a key result, there's a dollar, a percentage, a and unit, or a grade. Number. There's an actual tangible number that we need to have for the key result. We have to set a goal with a number in mind. And how do we choose that number? Where does this number come from? Exactly. So the way you find the number is you have to kind of talk with your team to understand how do how is the objective broken out? What are some of the factors that I can execute against that will help me achieve that key result? And it's going to be different for everybody else, but always remember the key result has to have a number and it has to be relevant and it has to be within a certain time frame. People normally develop OKRs within a quarterly basis and there's monthly or biweekly check-ins for them. So everybody has different objectives and key results in some way, shape, shape or fashion at their company, but I would highly suggest this is a simple framework that you can hold yourself accountable, your managers, and your entire company to get from A to Z. Because as you start building these OKRs, they all ladder up to something else. By the way, this is the way that Google sets goals. Google engineered this concept or very much popularized it. And this is the way that they continuously always iterate. So you look at the company goals over here, department goals. Then you look at the individual. And that's that example of what am I responsible for and how does it actually relate to certain things? This is a quick overview of this, of what objectives and key results are. And that's the, you know, that's the gist of it. But if you, again, if you don't know where you're going, you're not, you're going to get lost. And then you're going to be like, oh, I did some things on the C, uh, on the awareness side, but they didn't work. Well, did the, what was your objective and key result over there? Did you set up the right test? Did you just sit there and just try to do a test versus actually realize how it plays part of a larger experience for the customer? And again, goes back to Jeff Bezos and what he said, the customer experience is the most important thing. And that involves the awareness, consideration, the purchase and the post-purchase. You've got to think about everything, not just one component, but you have to kind of build that foundation up. I love that. I love that you said that. And, and also just the fact that Google standardized OKRs. This is an actual framework and a tool that you can start implementing right now for your business to be able to track that, that success. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, as we kind of start thinking about this, this is another example. But you kind of see that the numbers are attached to the KR, the key result. Mm -hmm. And all of these three objectives, the things that are in bold for each section, 
that these are generic or overviews of the things that need to be accomplished to the higher team level. So, so it's like taking your to-do list, your company goals to-do list, breaking them down, thinking of the number that you want to measure it by. And that's how you can literally look back and say, did I hit my objective based on my key results? Exactly. So every company has these different things, but this is a way to systematize it throughout your entire company. So well, I know we're going to have some questions after. I wanted to talk about some of my favorite tools and platforms I use to either understand who is coming to my website, how I can scale the people, how I can scale the engagement of people who are coming to my website. How can I learn more about them? So I'll mention a few right now. So if you are wondering, hey, I have a question about this tool, feel free to type it in the Q&A. If there's a specific type of tool or genre of tool that you're looking to get insights on, feel free to type it in the q and I'll go over a couple, but before I do, I want to talk about three quick principles of what to focus on when purchasing a tool. It has to be easy to use, scalable, and practical. These are obvious, but I cannot tell you, cannot tell you how many times I work with a client, they're like, hey, we're using this tool, but we don't, we don't really use it anymore. We have it, but we just don't know how to use it. Or a company is continuously growing and they realize, man, we've been using um, we've been using this um, survey tool, but it only allows us to target 50 surveys a month. And we now need to do 200 surveys a month. And this tool that we're currently using can't do it. So now you have to switch over and find another tool and it can't scale with you. And then there's the practical. Practical is simply, who is actually going to use this tool? How much does it cost? Am I actually going to get some value out of it? So whenever you're thinking about a tool, think about the easy use, scalability, and the practical aspect of it. So and, because we have a question that just came in. What are your favorite tools for creating um, ads, digital ads for marketing? Yeah, um, I'll tell you some of my favorite tools. Um, so when it comes to ever applying or creating, uh, sorry, whenever it comes to publishing ads, my number one suggestion is always go to Facebook and Google, go to the native platform because that's generally the best experience you can have. And they always are up to date on what they're doing. Here's what I mean. If you're going to buy ads, buy them on facebook.com. You can always use a separate tool if you want to, depends on how large you are. But generally just start at facebook.com, start at YouTube, go to the place where you're buying the ads and it'll be the easiest things. But I'll tell you a couple of places I love to create videos and images. I love to create images through Canva. Me too. I love Canva. Canva is Canva. the go-to, everyone. You need to get Canva right now. It's a free tool. Canva.com. It's so good. You can literally make anything. It's Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign in one. It's awesome. Uh, to build on that, I can use Canva. Okay, <laughs> I can use Canva. Anybody who knows me and they're like layers on Photoshop, I'm like, I, you've lost me already. I don't know what's going on. I'm not using it. I, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> Canva is beautiful. Now, here's another one I love. Another one I love is something called Lumen 5. Lumen 5 will take your article and turn it into a video immediately, just immediately. So if you want to create some videos with your articles, boom, Lumen 5 is great. Here's another one it's called Descript. Let's say you're, you know, let's just say we are going to take this entire audio recording and we want to get a transcription of the entire thing. We want an artificial intelligent one to just quickly do it. Descript will immediately do it for us in less than five minutes. Here's the better part about Descript. It will actually allow you to edit the audio through editing text. What? Ding, 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 ding. ding. This is huge. So I just dropped was... the chat box, everyone, so you can, you can start downloading these tools ASAP. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I'll tell you this one secret over here. <clears throat> it's a pretty good secret and it's cheating. If you ever go to, if you want to know, I want to know what my company, what other my competitors are putting on Facebook. Vikash, can you show me my ads from my competitors? Yes, you can. And it's free. Here's how to find it. And I'll make sure I do it with you guys right now. If yeah. you guys want to, Go to facebook.com backslash 
let me find a competitor just to find out. We love secrets, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jax, is there a company that you want me to look up? It's quite, let's look at uh, Lululemon. Let me sure. see if I have them. Lululemon, he's gonna check out. Yeah. Lululemon. And let me first confirm that it's there before all of you uh, go there, but I'll confirm it really quickly. Don't worry. Um, so if you ever want to, you can go to a Facebook page, go to a Facebook page, and if they're running ads, you'll see this. Go to a Facebook page, and when you go to their page on the left-hand side, you'll see a section called about, photos, maybe videos, and you'll see a section called page transparency. Page transparency. If you click on that, there's a, there's a link over that clicks on see all. And that see all, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see something called ads from this page. And I'll even try to find you that link. Facebook. Okay, so wait, we're going to do this. I'm actually going to do this with you guys because I really want to learn this as well. Okay, I'm here. I'm in Lululemon. Yeah, I so Lululemon, out. yeah. Yep, you go to about, and they're currently not running ads right now. But yep, on the right-hand side, you see see more. Uh, yep. See more, and then all the way in the bottom. So if you click all the way on the bottom, you'll see go oh, to look, ad this library. Oh, page is not running any ads. So let's wow. click on go to. Let's go to go to ad library. Now there are some restrictions. Maybe not all the ads will show. Maybe they will. Don't worry. But if you go to this link, and now you can start searching for other companies that you're interested in. So again, there are some restrictions on the ads that you can see and you can't see. But if you go to that section that Jax was just there, you can start seeing, oh my God, I can start seeing. That's incredible. So we can search our competitors and see what ads they're running mm -hmm. and just do a cross comparison and who they're targeting and what they look like. That's an awesome yeah. tool. That's great. Thank and, you for that. Yeah, and here's the easiest way. Maybe this tool, maybe all this stuff that Jax and I just showed is, Vikash, that's confusing. I can't find it. Here's what I suggest you do. Go to your competitors go to a product page, sign up for their email, do not buy anything, wait for the next couple of days. Click around, click as much as you want to, maybe save something, maybe create an account, do something on that page. I almost guarantee you will start seeing some ads running around on Instagram, banner ads, and you can be like, oh snap, that's what they're doing. It's okay to spy on your competitors. It's completely fine to it's do It's research. That. It's research. It's if research. you want to find out, if you want to find out what your competitors are doing on Google, you want to see the banner ads, what keyword ads they're doing, check out a tool called spyfu.com, spyfu.com. <laughs> that tool, you put in your co competitor's name and boom, you'll see from an SEO standpoint what they're doing, what keywords they're targeting, why they're targeting those keywords you'll start seeing everything they're doing from that aspect. I cannot tell you, these are the tools, these are the trades of secrets that people use all the time. I'll give you and a I couple have, more. Yeah, give a few more and I have one that I'll share too. Go ahead. Please, no, please do. From your point of view of Facebook. We need to, <laughs> not from the, first, from the front side, but the inside of Facebook. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because it's like a secret. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And I'll give you a couple of more. One that I absolutely adore. People always talk about, hey, I want to test something on our website, but Vikash, I don't want to get our developers involved. I don't want everyone to see it. I just want people in this country, in this area, this audience, people who are coming from this, e from our emails to see this. Well, here's the secret. There is a tool called VWO.com vwo.com. It's called visual, visual website optimizer.com. Now you may have heard of this tool or tools like this. Some of them are called like Google Optimize. It allows you to kind of change your website a little bit. Here's the cool part. You don't need to know any code. No code necessary. You literally tell them, here's what I want to change. It'll allow you to go to your website and then you can just delete and change colors as you want. It's like a Wikipedia page. 
You just kind of click around and choose whatever you want to. It's called a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And you can Love quickly it. change a few things. It's one of my favorite tools out there. I cannot encourage it enough. And I know we're coming up in 15 minutes left. I want to keep that for Q&A. And I know Jax is going to give a couple of more of her favorite tools. I want to mention one thing that's really important. People love data. I even love data. But here's the most important part about data. You have to track exactly what you're looking for. And sometimes there's a lot of dirty data. And what I mean by that is you don't get the entire scope. It can give you perspective, but it can't always give you every single insight. If somebody tells you this will absolutely work, you should be weary of them. Anybody who tells you, this is it, this is all you have to do, I have the data, always have a clear mind to kind of be like, well, we ran this test, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. All these tests and data should allow you to make in, in, insights, ask, uh, to gather insights to maybe make a instance of, hey, look, I have a suggestion now, or more importantly, ask better questions. So use data in that way to ask better questions. Not to, you gotta think about a scientist. A scientist isn't always saying, this is absolute, this is absolute. They're constantly testing and iterating. And that's how you get there. There are some best practices and those are easy to implement. And I don't believe best practices should be tested, but sometimes there's some things that are unique to us that we need to test. That's okay. But just make sure that you go with an open mind that maybe your assumption may not lead to what you're looking for. And it's okay. All of us marketers have to deal with that. All of us have to. But yeah, Jax, I know you had a couple of tools. Yeah, just before I drop in mind, Carolyn McKenzie has a question about a tool that you mentioned earlier, Lumum5. Can you spell that out so I can drop it in the yeah. chat? Uh, yeah, let me make sure. It's called L-U-M-E-N-5.com. L-U-M-E-N. Cool. I just dropped it in the chat box for everybody and I'm just going to give one quick tool here. Um, I run a lot of digital media accounts and do social uh, road mapping strategy content creation for many different clients. My secret tool is later.com. It is a software mm. scheduling and analytical data tool for Facebook and Instagram. You can pre-schedule your content. It will tell you best posting times based upon your algorithm and your users. You can really track and search your hashtags. It is like my secret sauce tool that I use for all of my clients and there's a free version of it. I mean, there's different pieces of it that you have to pay for. It's, it's pretty cost effective, but that is my favorite tool that I wanted to share with you guys. And now it is your turn for questions. Please feel free to drop them in our Q&A. Um, Vikash is, is, is amazing and he can help answer some questions that you might have that are very specific for your business. So please feel free to drop them in. Um, Vikash, I do have a question for you. In terms of ads, how long do you need to run an Instagram or a Facebook ad for it to be truly effective? Like what's, what's the, the best time for running ads? Yeah, it's a good question. I would suggest anywhere between, it depends on how much money you're spending, but I generally give it two, maybe three days. So if I want to spend $100 on an ad, I want to spend $30 a day. Okay, great. Spend three days doing it. I suggest giving it a little bit of time, more than just an hour or a day. What all these tools can do, like Facebook and Google, they can go so quickly and iterate for your ads so quickly that sometimes you want to maybe trust them, but also sometimes you want to be like, hey, I want to try it again. I want to give it a little bit more time. You know, even though Google said that this ad creative is better for me, it's not on brand. And I have to stay on brand before I figure out something that needs to be optimized. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Vikash, do us the favor. If we want to get in touch with you, if people want to reach out to you, if they want to email you, talk to you more personally, sure. how do they do that? Please drop it in the chat box. Yeah, I'll put it inside there, uh, my email address. And, and also, also I'll give my... Yep, perfect. I'll do that. These are the two ways that are probably best to connect with me. If you're looking, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, happy to do, you know, a 15 or 30 minute call. We can always chat and talk about your specific issues. Uh, you know, the thing that, you know, Jackson and I mentioned with Linea Pell and Mateo, 
was, you know, everybody that's on this call can talk to us and reach, reach out to us for at least 15 or 30 minutes for a free call. Don't worry. We're happy to answer some questions for you. And, you know, we just want to provide value. And if it makes sense that we can continue to work together, great. And if not, no worries. But feel free to reach out. We are happy to kind of add value to what you're doing. Thank you so much, Bikash. I really hope that everyone got to take some really good tools away from this workshop today. You have a better understanding of the full funnel and the customer journey for digital marketing, and you understand how to measure those objective key results. So thank you so much, Bikash. That was a lot of fun. I uh, want to say a big thank you to Orietta and Mateo and the whole Linea Pele community. Thank you so much for having us, and we can't wait to be back because I feel like we need to do another session on ad creation coming soon. So thank you guys so much for having us. Thank yeah, you. second that. Thank you, everybody. And we wait you at the Linea Pelle Fair in the next September. Hopefully it's gonna be a physical fair, but it will be even digital. So thank you very much for all this information. It was very professional. And uh, we just learn a little bit of it, of you, Akash, and I think you got an amount of uh, information <laughs> you can share with companies and even with the fashion uh, exhibitors uh, of um, Linea Pelle Fair, of course, and even in Italian fashion system. I think uh, you can have a lot of things to do here. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you again for having me. I really appreciate it, and thanks for all the participants. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, nice. Bye. Thank you, bye.